This is, without a doubt, the biggest land fraud scam in American history. We can make a lot of money by commercializing it, selling it off. Miss, can you just stop recording? Stop recording. Billion dollar piece of property, uh -oh. rent free. Uh -oh. That's all right. That's all right. Tell me. Who's this? I was arrested six times. Slate of hand type thing. This is classic of what's going on here. What's going on here. I was able to get a, a special purpose grant for a million and a half dollars. I said, you're in bed with the bad guys. He's, he swung at me. To put up a dollar so I could uh, uh, gain a lease on an empty building. He, he spent nine and a half years in prison for attempted murder. I started calling 911 because John has a violent past. They won't touch it. It's wow. too much wealth and power. Wealth and power. None of these rights are absolute. I just hope America wakes up. On April 9, 1865, the Civil War ended at Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia. After more than 600,000 Union and Confederate soldiers lost their lives, of the remaining 1.5 million plus veterans, along with the 80,000 veterans from previous conflicts, tens of thousands of veterans were in desperate need of medical treatment, housing, and employment. In 1865, during his second inaugural address, President Abraham Lincoln appealed to Congress and the nation on behalf of these soldiers to address this problem. To care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow and his orphan. Becoming the motto for the then Veterans Administration. In March 1865, the National Homes for Disabled Volunteer Soldiers, which resulted in establishing 11 permanent national homes between 1865 and 1930. Similar programs cropped up in the southern states for the Confederate veterans. In 1886, the Texas Confederate home was established in Austin, Texas, which housed hundreds of Confederate veterans. In 1888, the Pacific Branch of National Homes for Disabled Volunteer Soldiers was established in West Los Angeles, California. John P. Jones and Arcadia DeBaker patriotically deeded over 400 acres of pristine West Los Angeles land to be permanently maintained as a national home for veterans. Carolina Winston Berry is the great-great-niece of one of the landowners. This was a fully functional city within the county of Los Angeles. It had everything, its own post office, 150 acres under cultivation orange trees all over the place. You can't see an orange tree anymore. However, a lot has happened since then. William Mulholland arrived from the green hills of Ireland. He had stowed away on a sailing ship and had walked across Panama to save $25 in train fare. In 1886, when his boss suddenly dropped dead, William Mulholland found himself superintendent of the LA water system. Posing as agents for a federal project meant to irrigate Owens Valley, Mulholland's men went to the county courthouse. There they convinced clerks to show them deeds, maps, and records of stream flows. Within days, Eaton was quietly buying property, not to a local irrigation project, but to the city of Los Angeles. It was a real estate syndicate that would make millions of Owens River water irrigated their newly acquired San Fernando Valley land. The San Fernando Valley was being bought up by a syndicate of people who represented the power structure of Los Angeles being this incestuous cabal of uh, this hidden, you know, Jonathan Club, California Club oligarchy. Mulholland set out in 1905 to build his aqueduct across the desert. The Mulholland Water Project brought water into the Los Angeles area 
creating a population explosion that surrounded the Pacific branch of national homes. Wealth, money, and power flourished as a result. The city, which never had a reason to be, now had a thousand oil wells. And before long, 90% of all the world's movies would be made in L.A. Now, there were 60,000 realtors. The Chamber of Commerce sent millions of promotional brochures to the Midwest and New England, to Guatemala City and Paris. The city was built on the foundations of the oil business. It's a movie town, but before CBS built their studios on Fairfax, that block was just a bunch of oil drills. The thing about it is that it's still an oil field. Only no one can see what's happening underground. Standing next to me is Don Clark, who is a geologist. I'm a consulting geologist. I work for Occidental Petroleum. I work for the city of Beverly Hills, Single Hill, city of Newport Beach, city of Hermosa Beach. I've got quite a few very nice jobs right now. I also teach petroleum geology at University of Southern California. Believe it or not, this beautiful state-of-the-art shopping center that has a long, long history of shopping is a major oil field. It's produced over 20 million barrels, and it produces it right below our feet here, and nobody here even realizes it. Right now, the technology is very, very advanced, and we can drill very long distances from off-site. Well, this is one of the very famous urban oil sites. 58 wells have been drilled from this site. They are directionally drilled underneath the city. When you have land, any chunk of land, whether it be this land, the land of the houses right here, each land has surface rights, it has water rights and it has mineral rights. And a lot of people own them and don't know it. And you drill a well underneath my property, you have to pay me for my minerals. You can see it's a large building and it looks like just an office building yeah. with a large front. So it's all produced and then all of the oil from here is piped away. Yeah, it seems like they're trying to keep a pretty low profile. Urban development in West Los Angeles has had an adverse effect on veterans. Their land, which was once dedicated to veterans, has slowly been whittled away, leaving Los Angeles with a major catastrophe, thousands of homeless veterans. To discuss this issue, I met with Robert Rosebrock, who heads the Old Veterans Guard of the Veterans Revolution, an organization dedicated to getting the veterans' land back. It's basically, we call it, it's the deed of 1888 states five times in the deed to be permanently maintained as a national home for disabled soldiers. There's an act of Congress that preceded that one even before this could be established and it's incorporated into the deed. How many veterans are there actually in the veterans home right now? Living well, in the veterans let me home? explain. Most of these buildings are empty. They were built 70 years ago. They have a few. They're in rehabilitation, but the buildings are empty. They're rat infested. I am a Vietnam Air Vet. So you've had a fun. Uh, Hi. I'm Sergeant Barth of Police. How are you doing today? Good. <laughs> who, do you, uh, who do you work with? I'm just a citizen. You're just a citizen? Yeah. Oh, you're just out here just filming just for... Just for the LA Marathon and the veterans. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you don't work for any news agency or any press or anything like that? I'm not wearing a press pass. Oh, okay. I miss, can you just stop recording? Thank you. You're recording still? Yeah. You People are recording? recording all over the place. Yes, but you're, you continue to interview veterans and people that are on campus, and it's just not authorized. But they it's gave authorized, permission. It's authorized. With so it's free speech, with not the, authorized. That's what I want to know. Is it? Is this ground? Are these grounds open for free speech? Pretty sure. Yeah, there is also federal law that we have to follow, and that's why I'm trying to find out because. Under 38 Code of Federal Regulations, Please stop uh -huh. the, if you're using it for any type of commercial purposes, mm -hmm. you're going to show this for any type of gain or anything like that, that's where we come into that. That's why I'm just trying to find out. So, I'm a citizen here videotaping this event. There's a lot of citizens here videotaping. He's, he's a citizen and he's videotaping this event. I don't understand why I'm being hassled because I'm just trying to videotape this event and document life. This is life. Oh, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. We're just asking you not to interview 
our volunteers are... So okay. good. you can take video, you can take stills. We just ask that you don't interview anyone without any prior consent of the VA. Because we do, our public affairs does need to coordinate any interviews. So... I actually volunteered to give her an interview. Uh -huh. you know, I live here on these grounds. So I figure she's just doing it for her own yeah. benefit or whatever. So there's no freedom not of here, speech no, here? No, not here. Uh -huh. Not, not here, there, there is. Not. Apparently. Uh, uh, right outside that gate there is. I interviewed some people running the LA Marathon and none of them had any clue that so many veterans were basically exiled from the veterans home. Government documents show that the West Los Angeles VA has made millions of dollars renting out chunks of its property to private enterprises. From the road, it looks like a park, but within the grounds is the largest medical facility in the VA's health care system. Mark Rosenbaum, the legal director of the ACLU of Southern California, says they want permanent supportive housing right on the West LA campus. You can't get medical and psychiatric services if you're living in Skid Row and you're part of a cycle of homelessness. Neither the VA nor the Justice Department would speak because of the lawsuit, but if you try to figure out their position from what they say and do, you may come away confused. The government contends that the VA has no authority and no funding to create housing. Last year, around this time, you were arrested. That was in 2009, actually. That was in 2009. Uh, we had the American flag up here, and they came out and took it down. Yeah, we were headed up here for 66 Sundays, and, and we hung it in distress, which is totally legal. When a ship is in distress, you hang it on the vessel. Mm -hmm. We did it here. They came out. I was arrested six times. We filed a lawsuit with the ACLU, and then about a year later, uh, the judge entered a judgment against Donna Bider, the executive director. She's still in office. Yes, yes. It'll be May 26th coming up. will be two years since she was adjudicated in federal court. She's still running the biggest VA in the nation. This is the home that the head of the VA is allowed to stay at. It's a giant mansion. She's not a veteran. Uh, I have reached out to Secretary Shinseki, Congressman Waxman, who this is in his district, to Senator Feinstein, the U.S. Senator. Totally ignore me. I think that Feinstein and Waxman, those are the two main people that's been uh, working on this, that they're more for what's the rich people than they are for the veteran. We feel anybody that has anything to do with the Veterans Administration should have to be a veteran. What has Dianne Feinstein's role been in, you know, disabling the veterans from having their home? Well, first of all, she has uh, aided and abetted with the homeowner group to get this land where we're looking right here, which is a billion dollar piece of property. If you could build a building like this over here, it's worth a billion. There's 16 yeah. acres. Local uh, comparables on land like this is 50 to 60 million an acre. There's 16 acres. She arranged, her and Waxman, that this group could get this land right here where veterans from the Civil War once walked and turn it into a public park rent free. This is the Jackie Robinson baseball field. UCLA uses that. We just passed the Marriott Laundry that does the laundry for the hotels. We also passed the building where 20th Century Fox store sets and the 20-acre athletic complex for an exclusive private school. At the other end of the property were the parking lots full of rental cars and school buses. During the Bush administration, there were proposals for condos, office towers, a shopping mall. Waxman went to talk to then-VA Secretary Jim Nicholson. Secretary Nicholson told me when I went to meet with him that he was a real estate developer, and this was prime real estate, and we could make a lot of money by commercializing it, selling it off, and let people build whatever they wanted to build. The West L.A. VA hasn't been leasing the property, they've been sharing it. They used a law that says the VA can share facilities, quote, to secure health care resources, which otherwise might not be feasibly available. Today they run a marathon through here. Uh, business 
business by Frank McCourt, who uh, once owned the Dodgers. And this is a mega million venture. You pay $60, $70, I think, as an entry. And they have 25 Just start adding the numbers yeah. up. Are the veterans getting any of the money that the VA is getting paid for by the marathon? No, no. It goes into the general fund. None of the funds that are actually going towards helping veterans are really even going towards helping the veterans. No, no, no. It's like the nonprofits that are out there raising money to help the vet. They all get big fat salaries and expenses. It's really sad. And, I mean, at least they should have these chains open so that those who are homeless can at least camp in the camp out nothing I mean, else for now until they have their their place for them to live I mean they do have a headquarters and place for them to live it's just that where's that money going to that money should be you know in the ACLU lawsuit they're asking where is the money and Henry Waxman was asked this this is amazing this is one of the most powerful men in Congress and he says we don't know We've never been able to get uh, a lot of the details of exactly where that, how much money they got and how that money was used. No, 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 Henry, you don't know. You're, you're guilty of dereliction of duty. You didn't do your job. You're the elected servant who was supposed to save this land and protect it. But let's go back to who Henry Waxman is. Mr. Chairman, I must Did insist you, that we go to regular order. Gentlemen, uh, is n not in order at this time. Mr. Chairman, did you have, have a conversation? About, Mr. Chairman, the members that could yield you time, I would ask that you... I will have you physically removed from this meeting if you don't stop. The chairman hasn't even responded to our letter. Sir, Gentlemen's time has expired. Well, how does at the this chairman time, know that? At this time, I would like to... Point of order, Mr. Chairman, you've made a statement where you were not recognized for the time. You cut me out in the middle of a session. Your time was up, Mr. Waxman. Why are you interrupting members and then you take unlimited time for yourself? I'm the chairman, and I'm telling you right chairman. now we're going to recess for 10 minutes. Do you think the only way to incentivize a country is by offering them more and more carrots? You know, you've got to, you're going to have some threat. You're going to have some threat. President Bush allotted $15 million for steroid education. Where is that money gone? Um, I don't know. Do you know? Okay, we don't know. <laughs> so. What's interesting, he was um, seated in Congress about three months, four months before the fall of Saigon, the end of the Vietnam War. Henry was protesting that war, not fighting it, but protesting it. Today, 47% of all homeless veterans are from the Vietnam War. How long have the veterans been exiled from their home? Ever since the uh, uh, Vietnam War. For some reason, we began turning our back on the vets around the time of the Vietnam War. During the early part of the Vietnam War, construction began on the Interstate 405, which is part of California's major highway system. A section of the 405, once known as the Sepulveda Freeway, now Sepulveda Boulevard, cuts through the veterans' property. This stretch of road is named after the Sepulveda family of San Pedro, California, who in 1784 were issued a Spanish land grant by King Carlos III. Very close to this section of land and on the veterans' property is where the drills for the Sawtell oil field are located. Tell us about the oil that's been found on the veterans' land and what's, what's going on. Is that oil going to the veterans? Not at all. Thank you for asking. This is a gift. First of all, two families, they opened the first veterans' home after the Civil War era for disabled homeless veterans. This land was selected. And it's so amazing there's an oil well on this property. And that to make sure that this would always be funded at least, there's an oil well. The royalties don't go to the VA, they go to the Department of Interior. The Department of Interior gets the royalties, not the VA. Though the veterans were duly entitled to both the surface and mineral rights, through Mulholland Water Projects, the Los Angeles Department of Water and Power has the water rights.
Maps reveal that the Sepulveda Channel, which runs subterranean along the once Sepulveda Freeway, now 405, is a major waterway. While soldiers fought overseas, the 405 was built over veterans' land. Through the use of federal funds for state highway projects, the Department of Interior ultimately subrogated the Sawtell oil field. Even though the oil field had been duly vested to the veterans in the original deed of 1888. UCLA has a baseball diamond in there, a state of the art. If, if we would take care of our veterans in the manner that UCLA has a baseball diamond on here, we would be the proudest people. The VA has designated three vacant buildings on the West LA campus to be converted to housing for disabled homeless vets. They announced that in 2007, though they took no action. In 2010, the agency announced they would spend $20 million rehabbing one of those buildings. It was supposed to open this year. They have yet to break ground. The Senator Feinstein and Congressman Waxman have never appropriated $1 for one blanket for one homeless veteran. And because the pressure has been put onto them through the ACLU lawsuits and all, they recently appropriated $20 million to rehab one of those rat infested buildings of about 55 rooms that will house 65 veterans a year and a half from now. We have 20,000 out here. This is their little tokenism. And if you just do the simple math, it's close to $400,000 a room. You can buy them a home. The list goes on and on of people who have leases in here, privileged leases that should supposedly offset the expense of running the VA. Lawrence Tribe is the dean of Harvard Law School. In fact, he was President Barack Obama's mentor when Obama was a student at Harvard University. He is co-counsel with Mark Rosenbaum of the ACLU lawsuit, which was filed against the VA for misusing veterans' property and uh, abusing disabled homeless veterans. There are an amazing number of homeless veterans who are in terrible shape. A lot of them are chronically homeless. And the irony is that there is a perfect place where they could be taken care of. There's this huge facility about half the size of Central Park that was donated to the Veterans Administration in 1888, specifically for the people who were wounded in war. And it was used that way for about eight decades. Now it's used for, um, you know, high-end rentals. It's used for a laundry facility, for hotels. It's used for a golf course. Well, these guys sleep outside. Something should be done, so we're suing the government to make facilities available. The sad thing is on this is that the Obama administration is fighting this lawsuit. How is it that a country can treat its veterans that way, not be responsive to the kinds of pressures they face in combat? You know, you tell me. I mean, it, it's, it's shocking. The president is always talking about his great support of our veterans and, you know, a sacred trust and the homeless uh, take care of them and this and that. But here is for the first time we have a chance to settle matters, and he's fighting with his Department of Justice and U.S. attorneys. This is very troubling. I know Mr. Tribe has spoken out against it. These veterans, in the meantime, are, are roaming the streets, sleeping, uh, sleeping under bridges, uh, and there's a huge gap between our rhetoric and, and reality. Yeah, we're sitting right now on 12 acres uh, that was leased to the city of Los Angeles. Uh, for a dollar a year. It has a uh, baseball diamond, a uh, soccer field, and a public dog park. Mark Rosenbaum, the chief counsel for the ACLU, said, you know, you have a, if you're a dog, you have a better chance of getting in here than you do as a homeless veteran. Notice that they're more interested in picking up the dog turds from the rich people's dogs in this area than picking up the homeless veterans from off the street. Who, you know, these are all very wealthy people. They're not going to bring their dogs. They pay people to bring their dogs down here even. And you'll wow. see vans, which that's their job. I mean, this is a disgrace to put more priority over dogs. So I understand that you were harassed by one of the board members of New Directions. Yeah, it was John Kevney. He was the founder. I'm not from around here. I'm from, I'm from Scotland. 
and I came to this country in 1968. I jumped. I was a merchant seaman. I jumped ship in Veracruz, Mexico, and I came across the, the, the border down in San Diego, and I enlisted in the United States Army. John Kevin, he stopped at our Sunday rally and uh, stopped his car in the street, and uh, there's a glare on the windshield, and I can't always see when cars come through there, and he, I see a hand reach through a motion for me to come over. I'll go over and see us, John. I had a, a commitment to the, the, the veterans to do something meaningful. And he's laughing. He said, you're getting your effing butts kicked. Um, and uh, the ACLU lawsuit, you're a bunch of losers, called me a loser. And I said, no, John, you're a loser. You're in bed with the bad guys. And he swung at me. I just stepped back. John parked his car about 150 weight, feet away and got out. He starts walking toward me. And I grab my camera and start taking photos. And John's yelling at me, you know, stop taking photos or I'll F you up so bad nobody will recognize you. And uh, I've tried to do that by creating a place, a safe place where veterans can come and heal. He had a set of keys, and it was amazing they were protruding through both sides of his fist. I started calling 911 because John has a violent past. And I, I never wanted to see a veteran treated the way I was. He spent nine and a half years in prison. Uh, for attempted murder. He uh, pulled a knife on a um, VA, uh, one of the administrators. So I ended up being homeless and uh, drug addicted. After the knife incident with the VA, judge gave him an option to either go to, at that time, New Directions was operated by the VA or go to jail. And I got my, my life together in uh, 1985. John took the uh, uh, VA course. They dropped it. I guess it helped him. And like I said, for all counts at that time, 10, 15 years ago, John seemed to have his life together. And uh, he was a respected man in the com community. Everybody gave him a break. As a result of uh, uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters and Senator uh, Kerry, I was able to get a, a special purpose grant for a million and a half dollars. But when he came out there and starts um, laughing and make a mockery of a lawsuit. Now this is a man who only a few months before got an award from President Obama for being a model citizen. I, I wish there was more I could do for uh, President Obama because I know he's the right man for the job. And this honor is just, uh, is just too much for me to even understand because I really don't, within walking distance to the sea, these, these, these men who were boys when I was a boy, can stay and rest with me. And these are the very veterans that John claims that he's a help. Listen, we don't have time to graduate 200 veterans a year. We have 20,000. We had a chance to look at the New Directions website. The amount of lawyers, VAs, judges, ex-mayors, and financial consultants, people who also own technological accounting services, and so on and so forth. It seems like this is just a bunch of people who all have the skill sets to come together and commit fraud and get away with it. Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, this whole group, and again, go back to John Kevney. John, like you said, he was a hero. I really admired him, what he did and what he tried to accomplish. And they went out to raise money and what, what happened. These people, these are bro real estate brokers, as you point out, CPAs and attorneys. And they said, whoa, wait a minute, you got a 50-year lease on a piece of property here in Brentwood? Well, we're in the land business. You could get Los Angeles taxpayers to pay uh, what, in effect, were a cabal of real estate speculators. How are you going to do that? By incorporating the value into the city. Simple as that. So they were causing uh, one city, in effect, to pay for them to develop another city by call and then say, well, it's really the same city. It's going to be a lot of irate citizens when they find out, oh, that's all taken care of. I was able to get a, a special purpose grant for a million and a half dollars. And then I got the city of Los Angeles and Beverly Hills and Culver City and HUD to put up uh, dollars so I could uh, gain a lease on an empty building on the West Los Angeles VA Medical Center. It was a 60,000 square foot building. What they have you know, it's a 75-year lease for a dollar a year, and their only obligation is to supposedly rehab this, these buildings. These are nonprofits. Let me explain. 
And uh, New Direction did a joint venture with a company it's called a Community of Friends, which is a nonprofit developer, which is an oxymoron. Yeah. Developers are in the business to make a profit. But they did a joint venture and they got some nearly $50 million from HUD to rehab these 147 apartments. They have nothing invested. Everything is from our government. Now within that a contract agreement that um, the New Directions and the Community Friends have with the VA, at any time, the secretary of the VA can transfer full title over to this group. And, uh, you know, it's theirs, free and clear. And this is why when you go back, that's land fraud. I don't care what anybody says, they can come after me. Uh, it's fraud. This is the biggest land fraud scam in America's history. They talk about going in through school in the teapot dome scam. Are you kidding me? It's child's play. There's a couple of leases, oil leases. We got an oil lease here we don't even control. They're giving away land, billion dollar piece of property, rent free. You've got a billion dollar piece of property being transferred over, essentially leased for 30 years to a homeowners group. And if you recall, not too long ago when President Obama a few years back was elected president, his senatorial seat came up and what's his name, Governor Blagovich tried to sell that seat for $50,000. He's in jail for 14 years for $50,000, which would only have two years left on it. We're talking 30 years on a billion dollar piece of property, rent free. You're telling me that something wasn't done somewhere, that, that you have the con congressional delegation of Henry Waxman and Dianne Feinstein who endorsed this? You know, Michael Fuhrer, held every imaginable office. He um, uh, gets termed out and he goes from Netherlands right now as city attorney. The agreement that he is supporting endorsing at the Veterans Park Conservancy is part of the ACLU lawsuit. And that is it's in violation of the uh, um, Administrative Procedurals Act of the VA. Uh, that, that land was really ill-gotten. Um, they state, uh, Lawrence Tribe states in his interview with Charlie Rose that um, these are illegal contracts. Um, Mark Rosenbaum recently spoke before the veteran, Los Angeles Veterans Advisory Commission and he confirmed that these are illegal. And you have a city, a man running for city attorney who supports a park, a public park on veterans land. That's an illegal document. So uh, it's very questionable as how a, uh, a candidate for city attorney could be endorsing such an organization that um, has a very, very questionable deed that's uh, before the federal courts right now. They want to take over this land as a national park. It states on the front, Los Angeles National Veterans Park. And anybody knows that a national park comes under the Department of Interior. National Park Services. So what they've done is a really quick, slick movement to designate all of these buildings over here built in the 1930s and 40s as historic, which means you can't touch them. They fall under the Department of the Interior. Now, here's the real hook on it. The ACLU lawsuit has taken on all of these agreements, some 21. These are special arrangements. Uh, to lease land that belongs to veterans for non-veteran special interest groups. They violate the uh, Administrative Procedural Act of the VA. In other words, there's a procedure of going through it. They got all of this stuff behind closed doors. In fact, Sue Young, when she was asked by the Brentwood News how she was able to get this land, uh, she said essentially that it took unprecedented compromises let me repeat, unprecedented compromises, the highest levels of government, including the congressional delegation, and that means Waxman and Feinstein, wow. and the VA itself, the, 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 the bureaucrats. What we have back here is, so uh, there's 21 acres leased to the Brentwood School with a sweetheart deal. Brentwood School is one of the wealthiest private schools, 30000 a year for grade school through high school. They have tennis courts, they have swimming pools, they have virtually everything back here. It's a uh, athletic field, a playground, and up above is the, you can, was supposed to be the veterans golf course. A couple years ago, $200,000 in green fees were embezzled. A billion dollar piece of property uh -oh. rent free. Uh -oh. That's all right, that's all right.
Who's this? It's okay. It's Parks and Restoration. I don't know. This is classic of what's going on here. This is a veteran's land. You got a guy from Parks and Recreation, a paid employee of the government, city government, and they're snooping around at us. I just hope America wakes up and we need help. We just need help. Really sad. This is his or her home. Well, what I think is disturbing is how many veterans that are homeless are picked up off the street so regularly by police and put in jail, and then it's an endless cycle. It just rips your heart out to see a disabled homeless vet veteran uh, pushing a shopping cart or uh, struggling along in his wheelchair living in back alleys. I talk to a lot of the veterans over here at 7-Eleven because it takes time for before they get to know you because they're very proud people and they see you know, military so it's, you know slowly but surely they've been talking to me and stuff and most of them say they try to go ahead and get them in the home here they got a home for 209 people they got six people in there the reason why these guys won't go in there they got to go ahead and put down that they're alcoholic and drug addicts in order for them to get into it. I wanted to speak with a homeless veteran about this issue. What time did you serve? Like what time period did you serve? 77 in to uh, 1980. There's actually been a lot of veterans that yeah. homeless have been actually right. removed and kicked off of the oh, land. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. not allowing them to come back. They're not getting uh, housing or something because, because they do have drug problems. So it's a catch-22 situation that they got with the veterans. The solution to this problem would be to have the woman who breached your oath of office by violating your free speech, who's the head of the VA, she needs to be removed, and there's no reason that she, ha she shouldn't have already been removed. And actually, the other government officials who are aware that she breached your oath of office and have not done the administrative duty and fired her, they are in breach of their oath of office. So what we need to start doing is finding these criminal thugs that are government officials, and we need to start holding them to their oaths of office. And when they breach it, they need to be fired, and we need to replace them with those who maintain and uphold their oaths of office. Very well said. It's, and I just hope this gets out to people who don't just watch or listen, but will take action. Um, these are men and women who pledge their lives to defend your safety. And by the way, where we're standing here, as you can see, there's what the homeowner group calls a majestic wrought iron fence. And usually, originally, this was a, a chain link fence, and it was historic in itself. They didn't like it because they wanted to beautify the entryway into Brentwood, so the VA went partners with them, donated one million dollars of veterans' money for this you can see it, it's locked here. So they donated it for the for basically the use of locking veterans out yeah. because this is what they're doing with their gates. Their gates are not open saying, welcome veterans, nope. we will help you. It's locked saying, we're not doing anything for you, go sleep on the streets. You know, everybody talks about honoring our troops. We say today's troops are tomorrow's veterans. We made a vow to them that we go ahead for the rest of our life we would protect this country. I'm 73 years old. I'm still here protesting for my country, for my people. Please help the veterans get back their veteran homes.